Good morning students. Today I pile Parik and back and today in Piles Easy Commerce I'm doing something of Pete. Today we are learning about a virtual tour and a documentary and let's understand how both the things are little different. So virtual tour is a simulation of an existing location. Uh, usually it could be a sequence on videos or still images. Okay and there could be like uh, music, sound, narration or something or the other that could be there to enhance the entire, uh, you know, overall, imp overall outlook. Now, a documentary is a television or a radio program or a film, like a short film with real events or, uh, you know, uh, or real knowledge or information about a particular subject. In today's video log, we are doing a virtual tour as well as a documentary for Karnataka State. Hope you're going to enjoy this video log and do like, share and subscribe my channel. And also this video log would have not been possible without my student who is Ritika Zaveri and her friend Miss Sanaya Kinariwala. Thank you students and let's begin. Kinariwala and I've been uh, I live in Bangalore I'm currently in Pune but I've been there for four years and I'm a travel blogger okay so I in Bangalore I live in electronic city which is actually uh, very far off from the main Bangalore like Ormangla and etc is where the nightlife of Bangalore actually is my life there is pretty um, it's everything's very handy now like in the beginning it was difficult because your food cravings you had to go to Kormangra and now there is there are there are breweries and there is everything like you know there are malls and people come from the main of Bangalore to sort of come here to chill. Like how do you travel internally? Is it um, easy to commute? Uh, Bangalore is very big on public transport. The first time I entered that that's literally how it works. Like every everywhere you go there are buses, there are local buses that just get across the place. It's very convenient because they have AC buses uh, and they're very well maintained but you know that the Bangalore airport is like light years away from Bangalore so that is a bus that runs every what 30 minutes or 15 minutes I think from the Bangalore airport all across Bangalore it takes probably three four hours like to get to where I live at least and it's a slow bus because it stops everywhere but you're home in 300 rupees if we're in Bangalore then um, we usually sort of firstly go see the Bangalore palace because that's really really pretty now because it, it's been it's very very old and it's very beautiful so uh, okay so so they have a really nice light and sound shows and uh, the palace has a park and things like that so you can probably these guys the park usually has like a lot of um, treasure hunts that they have um, the mall Ubi city is is known for like their the Louis Vuitton and like that is the place that you find all those brands together so when you go there with an empty wallet that could be depressing but I mean it's just so nice to be there so in Bangalore the system there the staying system there is that they usually have a two three story building and uh, the first story would be where the family would stay and the story above that 
they would usually rent it out to like bachelors like me because there are so many companies and everybody needs a place instead so that's something that that's very specific to what i've seen in bangalore if you want to see the nightlife in bangalore like that is something that you should so you'd see like lanes where there are so many clubs that you can and not only for the alcohol or for the liquor or anything it's uh, clubs are they make their own beer so these breweries are really nice uh, there are some brew there's one brewery which is the largest that there is in india most of the population in bangalore is of of 25 30 35 ish has there always been a language barrier so a lot of people there speak kannada i mean everybody speaks kannada and there are also tamilians there are a lot of south indians basically so there are a lot of languages that come in that but predominantly a lot of um uh, kannadigas there who speak kannada local delicacy or street food so it's just it's insane the kind of varieties they have in south indian food there um and the best part is it's not only south indian they have a lot of uh, standard places for andhra food they have a lot of standard places for they also have a lot of places for proper south indian food so uh, food that you know that you might not even like proper kerala food and things like that not only kannada food like not only so yeah so that and also because it's so close to hyderabad so there are like hyderabadi biryani places and there's this place called meghna biryani which serves absolutely the best kind of biryani in um, in bangalore um also for south indian food there's this place called mtr um is where the brand came from and also which is where uh, they have you know, these very traditional uh, south indian dishes that aren't anywhere close to what you eat something called appam that you eat with so basically it's just like a dosa but of different different types so you have like this uh, idli appam and appam and to so many things that you would have never seen in the other parts of india or is those thalis so basically they're wet thalis of andhra food basically so it's just it's just been a banana leaf they of course our indian food is eaten in banana leaves so a fun fact also about that is that it adds to the aroma of the food so it leaves this really nice aroma to anything that's served in it and that's why everything's eaten on banana leaves so oh, yeah in bangalore you can also uh, definitely go to uh, the amusement park what is that wandala yes like it's like it's i mean it's almost at part magica so people who come there usually sort of end up going there for sure it's it's a really nice place to be yep, it's really nice is there any other place that you have um, traveled in karnataka so the thing with karnataka is that um, bangalore itself if you think right it's in a very very well placed as a city like for example uh, we have pondicherry which is a union territory which is just what like 8 hours drive from my house so that so everything is just so close by and like i mentioned the local transport is so good that you can just pick up a bus and leave for a weekend so i mean um and the good part is that all these places around bangalore like especially in karnataka if you speak about gokarna gokarna has beaches really beautiful beaches and uh, if you did not know gokarna is also like one of the largest producers of salt so they have like a lot of um uh, salt lakes sort of a thing uh, that they sort of create and uh, where they sort of you know make their salt they bake their salt for like what good eight Eight nine months of the year and things like that, and they have like this all woman factory in like two three places in Gokarna where they have so many women who are just just working with heaps and heaps of salt. Like I've been to those factories, I've chilled with the women there, and they're just women from like all over India. They're not only people from like somebody there could speak Marathi, somebody there could speak Kannada, somebody there could speak Gujarati also. Like so, there was that was what it was when I went there. so that's something so every place that has a different vibe so that was gokarna hampi is again a town which is which is ruins right so you see a lot of like historic ruins there and then you also like have really beautiful lakes there where you can like i did cliff diving at hampi which was beautiful like it was so beautiful and so hampi also has two parts to it because uh, hampi as a place you have this whole um, this whole ruins where you read about like history you see what temples were there you see what was made where and that is one side of it that's the history side of it which is very very like it's not exhaustive you there's so much to read and know there and i feel like your one trip is not enough to understand how that works 
but there's also another place called the hippy island it's called the hippy island so you basically take a ferry from the main hampi where the ruins are to the hippy island and once you take a ferry to the hippy island there are there are just cafes like there are so many cafes so many guest stays and you and then and then you walk a little bit further by the end and it's just it's basically like just one straight road of the so many cafes and in hippy island there's just like at the end of it you'd see a lake so that's the lake where all of us went cliff diving and it's a very common thing so that is something that you could definitely like think of doing that's a completely different vibe from what you would get in gokarna because there are beaches there there are no beaches here you just you can't cliff dive in gokarna but you can in hampi and uh, then they take you for boat rides with like these lovely so in uh, one more thing in karnataka which is different from your other parts of india would be the boats you have these round uh, coracles that you have so they are not your normal boats that you have but you have these round boats they are called coracles and they are they are round because the people who are the boatsmen it's easy for them to sort of get more people to fit into it and things like that that's just been something that they do and then when you're in a boat ride they'll probably like turn the coracle round and round so that you know and you start feeling giddy because but that's just something that they do like whoever comes there they sort of take them round and round like a merry go round and then you're just like a race stop 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 so that's something that again is very is something that you have in hampi and uh, then very different from that vibe is something that you have in chikmagalur and uti which is mountains which is again completely different like you know you get like these beautiful mountains or then you have these place, this place called hoganakal falls they are one of the like one of the top 10 or 15 waterfalls in india they are huge and it it's they are like a proper replica of uh, you know something that a tiny niagara falls would look like because they are so huge and so yeah so i think there are so many so many places i'm not sure if uh, and then there is there are like you can prob- probably take a trip to nandi hills where um you know it's just you're just in the clouds like that's that's it like you're just there and you're just around the clouds and it's just like a small like what a two hour drive in bangalore it's not even outside bangalore